Hello and welcome. My name is Mar DiCarlo. I am the founder of the International Parenting and Health Institute, parentinghealthinstitute.com. Today, I am very excited to discuss with all of you the power of nutrition. And I have some very special guests with me today. We're going to host a round table and share with you how going through postpartum um, you know, depletion, that how nutrition can be very supportive during that time. We're also gonna share a little bit about adrenal fatigue and nutrition, as well as healing our relationship with food, which is a very important foundation to this all. So if you have not checked out, for those of you that are maybe joining for the very first time and you don't know much about myself or my company, and if you have not checked us out, please do check out parentinghealthinstitute.com. Also, if you are on YouTube watching this live stream, please make sure that you go ahead and click the like. If you find any value in today's discussion, um, go ahead and click the like button as well as subscribe because we're going to be sharing so much more information in the near future with all of you. And of course, looking for topics and questions that you want answered, you know, we're going to go full force. And I'm very, very excited um, to be able now after being um, behind the scenes for quite a while to come forward more publicly and share a lot more of my passion with all of you. All right, so I'm going to uh, have Stephanie Dawn join us. Stephanie is a near and dear friend. We actually met many, many, many years ago when I first began my International Parenting and Health Institute back in 2009. And uh, she's going to share a little bit more of the details. Uh, back then, she had um, sacred birth and um, Stephanie helps awakened healthy women who are fed up with living in a toxic world to create radiance, vitality, and wealth. She's also a breast cancer survivor. Um, so I feel very blessed. I have so much gratitude for having her join us today. I'm gonna bring her on. Hi, Hi. Stephanie. Hi, Mar. Hello. <sighs> so thank good to be for joining. Yes, thank you for joining us. Yeah, this is awesome. It's almost like we're in the same room, same city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're kind of far. <laughs> yes. So you want to share with everyone a bit about your background and how you started out when we met Sacred Birth and then you transitioned on your path, continuously evolving, expanding, mm -hmm. and then going through your incredible journey, overcoming such an incredible challenge of breast cancer, and now turning this around and supporting others. Yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to. And thank you for the honor of inviting me here. It's really exciting to share this with you and with your followers. Um, so yeah, we need to go back a bit, back a few decade and a half maybe, <laughs> to when we first connected uh, with our passion around in, in the birth world and supporting moms. My my entrance into the birth world was really about helping women and men ultimately, but initially it was all about women to create a sacred birth. And so I, I created this work called Sacred Birth Work that began as these small little workshops in LA. And then I took the workshops to New York and then it morphed over time to start working with uh, birth professionals all over the world. I created a mentor program and I started working with midwives, doula lactation consultants, prenatal yoga instructors, et cetera, nurses, to really help them understand that birth is sacred and that, you know, we as this, that, you know, that, that they as the supporters of women who are about to give birth can really hold space in a way um, prenatally, during the birth and postpartum that is deeply respectful of the woman and just the, um, the, uh, just the role of birth in our society, really. Um, and then I came up against a lot of, um, oh, just really crimes against women that I, I was watching unfold in terms of, um, that formulated some activism. I got really involved with improving birth and um, all the work that they were doing as an advocacy arm for women in birth. And um, and then I, I stepped out of the birth world uh, for a time in terms of doing all that education. And more recently, I've stepped back in with the nutritional piece to really, because it was, you know, in all my birth work, Mar, 
the the nutrition uh i understood organics i understood the importance of eating organic food but i didn't understand the importance of daily nutrition i was the girl that would go into whole foods and get a green juice and you know drink it down and then feel like okay i'm good for the next five to seven weeks you know like it was crazy and so i consequently put on a lot of pounds postpartum and um didn't know what to do didn't know how to you know get my pre-baby body back and so i started really looking into nutrition and ways in which i could help my myself and and then i started realizing i was like wow well this is helping me who else can it help around me and that's when i started sharing it with um, fellow moms and and birth professionals um to help them make the connection you know because i don't really feel like in our culture we really support moms postpartum the way that we could be and we certainly don't really know what we're talking about when it comes to nutrition so I, i'm wanting to fill that gap a bit here <laughs> I just unmuted my mic. Um, yes, I agree with you. Absolutely. And you know, I love how our universes are, we are on this parallel journey. So while we are having different experiences, we both started out with this birth work. Well, prior to the birth work, I was already working in the health and fitness field for quite a long time, but I love how we both evolved from birth and recognizing, you know, how much more we can provide empowerment, um, you know, to families postpartum, pregnancy and postpartum, but really starting to look at the physical and emotional well-being. Because whenever people are stuck, you know, we have so much information that's available to us everywhere these days. People can easily research things, easily look things up. There's so many experts, so many books, so much available to us. But at the end of the day, why do people continue to make the choices that they make? Why do they keep on, you know, um, making those choices to not take care of themselves? And one of the things that I have found throughout my journey is that when you become a mom, um, there is this stigma that, okay, your life is kind of over. Yeah, you've gained the postpartum weight um, and really just take care of your kids, you know, live through your kids, live through their dreams. But, you know, that's basically it. And if you're a woman like us, women like us that are very passionate, very powerful, you know, we're really driven through our intuition um, and, you know, we're in alignment with life. We don't fit into that model because life doesn't end with our children. You know, we recognize that children are their own people. Like you said, sacred birth, because having a birth and having a child is also about recognizing that, you know, while you are supporting that child's life, you don't own that child, right? That child also has his or her, her own life and they're going to be on a path and we're there to support them on their path. But that doesn't mean then we ignore our own dreams and our own passions and our own health and just live like martyrs, right? Which is what a lot of people postpartum do. Um, and so I felt very empowered to rise up like you and say, all right, you know, I'm not only going to live it, but I want to give back. I really want to support. And there's so much as we'll talk about that connection between, and I'm sure you'll go right into this with your postpartum um, you know, information you're going to share the, the gut, right. And, and the emotions and so much that goes into that. There's this very intricate, intimate relationship and all the scientific research to back this up. That's very powerful and it's extraordinary. So I feel that the more we can empower, uh, people and especially postpartum women and even pregnant women to take charge of their health and understand, you know, the power available to them and how much they can expand and grow and really fulfill their life so that their life is not just about having children, but it just continues to expand, right? They continue evolving as human beings. So that's exciting for me. Yeah. Well, as you know, Mart, like the mom is the center of the family. You know, the, mo the mother is really the engine. <laughs> and when moms aren't nourished, it's a problem. And it's a problem for everyone because it's not pretty. <laughs> you know, If we're not sleeping well and we're not nourishing our body well and we don't have the energy that we need to do life to show up for our children, our mates, if we have one, and then, you know, our community, our work, et cetera, it's not good. And so we see a lot of moms out there running on empty, incredibly depleted. And, and when you have that extreme depletion, that can really affect brain. 
and, and um, it's very serious. And this was my wake up call a couple months ago with a colleague of mine who experienced three years of postpartum psychosis, Mark. Mm. years. And I don't really think that I had a clear understanding of what psychosis was until I spoke to her. And I said, tell me exactly what it is, will you? Her name's Hannah. And she wanted to harm herself mm. and she wanted to harm her baby. She had like psychotic episodes and thankfully she didn't do either. But it wasn't until she got her nutrition right because what was happening was that people were telling her that she was fine, that nothing was wrong. Nobody would listen to her. And so finally her sister listened to her and her sister connected her to um, our mutual friend, Rachel. And Rachel connected her to this nutritional protocol that she now, you know, effectively claims to saved her life, oh. you know? Yeah, and her marriage, I might add. She was ready to leave her husband. She's like, I'm not the woman that you married. And I, I don't know, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't want to leave me. And so my heart just broke for her. And I thought, how many women are suffering like this in the United States of America today? And no one's listening to them, or maybe they're not even sharing their experience because they're afraid that if they share their experience, their babies are going to get taken away from them. Mm-hmm. So this is really serious. And so thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak about it because it's something that I deeply care about is elevating this conversation so that moms get the help that they need nutritionally. 100%, you know, and you remind me too of, it's like it feels as the years go by more and more labels and diagnoses come out. And I have witnessed so many people, including, you know, postpartum moms, whose lives um, all of a sudden take a 360 because they went from feeling fine and now they have this label of, you know, oh my gosh, you've got this disorder, that disorder. And all of a sudden who they thought they were changes and their self-worth and their value goes down and that takes a toll on them. And I love your perspective, which is the same as mine about nutrition because when we really understand when we're out of balance, it's a matter of really looking at, you know, the whole entire picture of what's going on, right? Physically, emotionally, understanding where we are deficient, you know, um, there's, which I'm sure you'll talk about in a moment. There's so many different nutrients that we can be depleted from that absolutely can take an immediate toll on our mood. And mm -hmm. so as a result, then we, get this label on us as if, you know, we're guilty of something wrong or bad when in fact, all it is, is that we're, like you said, depleted. And so if we're to pay extra attention to that and recognize, okay, what do I need to do to make my system function better to take care of my physical, emotional well being, or even reach out for support so I can have a community of people, not just a coach, but a community of people to support me through this process. And I think you're absolutely right. You know, breaking that stigma is very important. I always say, you know, we're human beings. This is not about perfection. It's about understanding as human beings, we're on this journey. And part of this journey is, you know, embracing the challenges and understanding that no matter what labels come, what experiences come, this is an opportunity for us to say, okay, this is happening for me, not to me. It's happening for me. Where can I meet this situation or how can I meet the situation in a way that's empowering that like you did, which I'd love to hear more about, please. Cause I'm sure our audience would love to hear more about your breast cancer as well. Mm -hmm. um, and how you overcame that because, you know, it's a scary thing. Um, and like you said, a lot of people, and it's particularly moms, feel embarrassed or ashamed to share. They have a weakness to share that, you know, they have a shortcoming or that they've had a label on them now. Um, and as you said, maybe they're afraid their child would be, or children will be taken away. Um, and all these fears and doubts come into their mind. And so they hold back, which then, you know, makes the process even more lonely. And most times they don't, you know, take care of themselves. And it's just, they go down until they hit rock bottom. And who knows after that? Yeah. 
Yeah, incredibly isolating. Um, the postpartum term can be for women, and it's you know it's interesting. I go back to my own experience as a mom living in Venice Beach, California. I was surrounded by community, but nobody had a child except for me. And people were like feeding feeding me when I was pregnant, you know, celebrating me with all the, the the baby blessings and everything. And then everyone just like goes off to their own lives, and there I am with the baby. My husband is out working every single day. And it's incredibly isolating. Mm -hmm. And so I had to do the work of finding the community in my um, my uh, local town of Venice to actually, you know, create the meetups and stuff. But coming back to what you were saying about, you know, no, knowing what to eat as women prenatally and postpartum, it's not really something that doctors talk about. Number one, because they don't get a lot of nutritional education which is a whole nother conversation that we could have, Marta Carlo. <laughs> Very true. Very true. Yeah. Right? Um, and, but the, the interesting th thing is either do midwives really talk about it that much. And mm -hmm. so for me, Mar, I'm just going to be really transparent here. Like I've struggled with, with my weight my entire life, like up and down, up and down roller coaster. And um, I just have that body type and I, I do love food. And, and so when I got pregnant, it was like, Oh, I can eat danishes and butter now, <laughs> you know, like I don't have to have a filter about what I can and can't eat. Now I'm pregnant. I can just feed me and the baby and it'll mm -hmm. be all good. Right? No, no. So, <laughs> but there was nobody to really educate me. And so all that I've learned about nutrition has been from me educating myself and being that sponge mm -hmm. and learning about how I can help myself, number one, because I was like 10 years postpartum, 50 pounds overweight, Mar, and all those pounds are gone now. Mm -hmm. You know, they're all gone. And I, I have my body back that I had before I ever had my first child. And so, and I did, I waited until like my late 30s, early 40s to have a baby. So, you know, then we're getting into the midlife and, and mm -hmm. met metabolism starts slowing down. And, and so, you know, what I've learned is that nutrition can jumpstart metabolism mm -hmm. and it can eliminate brain fog and it can heal. Um, well, we don't use that word. It can transform the gut, you mm -hmm. know, and, and really um, gut health. And um, so there's a lot more I could say about the gut health. So wherever you want to go. <laughs> sure. And I see that Rachel's also joined us. She's waiting. So Rachel, I'll introduce you in a, a minute. Um, I think what I'll do before I hand over, because this is a round table discussion, so we're going to keep going back and forth. Um, and I think what I will do is just have you talk a little bit about uh, your breast cancer, because I know, like you have mentioned, you've been through this incredible journey. Um, though I, it's interesting with me with weight, weight really hasn't been a huge issue. I've had definitely moments where I've gained a lot of weight and then lost a little, but I've never been quote unquote that overweight my whole life. But what I have been is for a long time, because I've been very involved and invested in the health and fitness industry, there is a lot of psychological, um, you know, aspects of it that can get in the way when you're around a lot of trainers and when you're at the gym all the time, there's a lot of pressure. And so what I went through on my end is really transforming my relationship with food and understanding how my mindset and my psychology um, and the brainwashing, you know, all of the since growing up, just being aware of all the habits and patterns and the subconscious brainwashing that had happened throughout my whole life until I recognized, and I did a lot of personal work to understand that. And of course, going through a variety of trainings, because as many of you who know me, I'm a learning junkie and <laughs> I train and train and I soak up and I do a lot of research. And uh, so a blend between my experiences, as well as having this really direct um, you know, love and hate relationship with food really spawned on me this path of self love and transformation, which, you know, again, led me to wanting to give back. But I'm really interested um, in all of this that you're speaking about. And I know that our viewers want to hear how you overcame breast cancer, because I imagine getting that diagnosis um, and just a diagnosis alone, I know for a lot of people that can hit very hard. And then you made this decision. And I believe you went not only public, but you kept up with what was happening, what you were doing. I mean, you were sharing with everybody your journey. You just came outright. I mean, it's, it was incredible, inspiring, you know? And so I admire you so much for that. 
Oh, thank you, Mar. And thank you for all your love from afar on the social networks. It's been really, I'm so glad that we're still in touch and, um, and then we can still love and support each other, even though we haven't seen each other in so many years. Yeah. So the breast cancer diagnosis was a real um, shock. Uh, I'd been on this up leveling my health nutrition path for about three years, maybe a little bit longer. And, and here's the funny thing, Mar, I would cleanse and then I'd go back to my bad habits and then I'd cleanse and detox. And then I'd go back to my bad habits and, you know, the pendulum would swing back and forth. And so with the diagnosis, I got really clear that, uh, there's no going back to your bad habits, Stephanie. Like you really, you need to like stay, <laughs> stay on the path of clean eating and, 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 and beyond, right? Because with a breast cancer diagnosis, that's any cancer diagnosis, it's no joke. It's like the pain of your body is such that cancer can thrive. And I took that very seriously. And um, I, I, I made the decision pretty rapidly, Mar, to go to Hope for Cancer in Mexico, which is an amazing anti-cancer facility. I went there for three weeks and um, ate gourmet organic food for uh, three weeks, three meals a day. I've never been treated so well in my entire life. Like, I was completely cared for every single day. I had two nurses, one in the morning, one at night. I did anti-cancer um, treatments all day long, seven days a week. And um, uh, yeah, it was an incredible experience, detoxing, detoxing. It's all about detoxing and putting the right stuff in. So getting, getting the junk out and putting the right stuff in. That's what you want to do when you have a cancer diagnosis. And, you know, one of the things, Mar, that, that led to my sacred birth work all those years ago is that I'd been a, a spiritual counselor and I'd been studying for six years leading up to launching my 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 coaching and counseling practice. And so mitigating fear, transcending fear was a big part of my personal work and a big part of my professional work. And so with the cancer diagnosis, I was like, well, why would it be any different with cancer? Like, I'm not going to let cancer, you know, have its power over me. I'm going to work with my own consciousness to not allow fear to come in. And I'm going to overpower the cancer. And so the, I use my mind, right? I use my mind to um, have dominion over cancer, which is what I would teach women to do over their birth. Like you have the dominion over the birth. It's your birth. It's your body. You're sovereign, right? So it's the same thing with cancer or health, just to open that up. Like really, my mom, she's so funny. She's like, don't you get tired of like reading and talking about cancer all the time? I'm like, mom, I'm talking about health. I, I'm learning about health. And so I was also working with a coach at the time that I got the cancer diagnosis who told me, she said, Stephanie, if it is cancer, because there was a lump in my breast, she goes, I've got you. You know, you do fear. I've got you. And so that was the beginning of the um, uh, really the dissolution of fear equals cancer, uh, you know, fear and cancer go together and that cancer equals death. I just didn't put any energy in that direction at all. And as you know, Mar, that's just not what happens in our culture today. Oh, no. Fear, fear, right? fear. Everything is fear-based and F cancer. And you know what a lot of people don't know and understand is that cancer actually is happening as a way to help us and support us. People see cancer as a very bad thing. Actually, it's a response. If we didn't have cancer, we'd be dead already. And so when people understand the mechanics of what's happening and how the body's response to it is through cancer, and then they realize, wow, the body's actually responding in a way that's trying to help you, not trying to hurt you. And there's ways that you can then understand what led to it. Like you were doing, you went to this, you know, treatment and you took care of yourself and your perspective is so empowering because I feel that when we face these things head on. And similar to you, I was the same way. Like I also started out in the similar um, birthing process because I was a single mom. Well, during my pregnancy experience, I was with uh, my children's father, but I had no friends or family. It was an unexpected pregnancy. I didn't, I you know, was living in a new place, didn't have community around me. And so I had to find you know, ways to really support myself through this entire experience. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started finding out uh, how little uh, there was available in terms of support, unless you reached out for it, you know, unless you dug for it, 
Um, it really wasn't there. And so similarly, like you, I said, all right, I'm a go-getter. I'm like, you know what, if I'm stuck, and I think it's part of maybe also our upbringing, I always grew up in a way where, look, maybe it's because I grew up in New York, immigrant parents, but it's like, you know what, when you face those challenges, it's like do or die. <laughs> you know, you find a way to overcome, you know, you find a way to meet the moment and it's like, all right, let's go for it. And so that has stayed with me for life. And like you, I have this very similar perspective that, you know, when these things happen, any challenge happens, it's a, it's life's way of communicating to, to us. All right, let's do an evaluation. What's happening? Where can we evolve and grow from this? It's not a, oh, you're doomed for life. And I agree with you. Our culture is the opposite. It's like, oh my gosh, you've got this diagnosis, this thing. And people go into fear mode. You know, they go into anger mode. Now it's, it's absolutely important to have emotions and it's natural to have emotions of anger and sadness and fear. But then you realize, okay, do I want to keep feeding that? Or do I now want to meet this moment and do something about it, which is what you did. And you took it head on. So I commend you for that. And so then your, your, um, was it, it was a tumor, right? Or the lump uh, started shrinking. Is that correct? Yeah. Started shrinking. yeah. So there's tumors in both breasts. Well, there was, mm -hmm. there, so there are still tumors, but I have a different diagnosis now. I don't actually have a cancer diagnosis according to my natural path. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, 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 the diagnosis that I have now is, um, she said to me the last time I visited her, she goes, did you even have a cancer diagnosis? I'm like, yes, Dr. Kimmy, I am both breasts. She goes, stuff. I'm not getting cancer at all in your body. She says, what I am getting is um, cystic hyperplasia and fibroadenoma of the breast. And I was like, what's that? And she goes, well, it's not cancer. <laughs> so um, it's a condition and I'm working with that condition right now with my diet and with my um, quality of life and you know, just all the things that I'm continuing to doing to do for my self care. So, mm. so I don't even identify with having cancer anymore, Mar. Wow, that's incredible. And this condition, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this something too that as we like, you know, go through our, you know, let's say late 30s, early 40s, into our 50s, we're more likely, from my understanding, to have this kind of condition just because we're also going through hormonal changes and different things. So if we're not aware, it's it's actually I've heard of this before too. Not only have I researched it, but where people have gotten misdiagnosed. Um, and by yeah. the way, uh, I encourage everybody always get second and third opinions because um, there's a lot of misdiagnosis going on. So I always tell people to be you know, safe and to just really get clear, get at second and third opinion, um, because people are quick to diagnose cancer these days. I'm so glad you said that it is so important. There's so much misdiagnosis happening. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've been reading about it in um, the book Radical, <laughs> oh, <laughs> which is all about breast cancer in the United States. I recommend it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm so, thank you so much. Let's go ahead and introduce Rachel. Thank you, Rachel, for being so patient. I'm going to add Rachel on here and Rachel, one moment too. I want to um, just share a little brief part of you and then you'll give us more details. I'm just bringing you up here. So Rachel, I met through, hi, Rachel. Hi. <laughs> I met Rachel through Stephanie and we had some, we've had been having some great conversations. Uh, all of us really empowered and, um, mm -hmm. Rachel's all about cultivating leaders and leadership, supporting your creation of a conscious life of health and prosperity. She's a co-author of Fitness to Freedom, um, and she's a vegan and Filipina. So Rachel, welcome. Thank you. So honored to be here. This conversation has been so inspiring. Hearing, hearing you, Stephanie, talk about your, you know, that you actually, your diagnosis has changed after all this incredible work you've been doing on yourself and just really really it's mind body and spirit and just in your food is just so just like yes we can do it it's just it's such an affirmation for people who are taking the natural journey with cancer thank you so much for sharing that mm -hmm. and, and mar you're also such an incredible inspiration to me with all the work that you're doing for you know for for uh, women and mothers and children and education it's just so incredible you're such a huge inspiration to me so it's just so fun to be here 
Thank you so much, Rachel. And I know you've gone through an incredible journey yourself. I know that today you want to talk to us about adrenal fatigue and overcoming Hashimoto's. And you've got also too, you're, you've been in fitness competition. I mean, you've got, wow, you've got a <laughs> wealth of experience as well and training and uh, yeah, feel free to share more however you want to start. Thank you. I mean, it has been such an incredible journey. It's just it's just crazy where I was six years ago that I was like completely depleted. I had no energy. I mean, fitness was the furthest thing from my mind. Bodybuilding was not even ever even an, an idea in my head from the time I was born until four years ago. Um, it was just it's just it's just so amazing to me. Still, just pinch myself that this that I've come this far. And, you know, I really, really was in a struggling place. I had complete adrenal fatigue, like you said, I was struggling with brain fog. I had, you know, I slept all the time and I was really just trying to figure out how am I going to survive for the rest of my life? How am I going to actually live and not be homeless? Because I couldn't, I couldn't, I was getting to a place where I wasn't able to work anymore. I was starting to turn away. I was a wedding photographer. I started turning away weddings. I started turning away work on any level and I was just getting simpler and simpler. I did actually become a Ayurvedic practitioner because I thought, well, I can just, then I don't have to travel. I can work at home. I can work, I can have a you know private practice. It can be a simpler life. And so I didn't want to be traveling as a wedding photographer anymore. So I was kind of in this transition, but I was just, you know, trying to heal myself. That's really why I went that route of, um, of, of uh, Ayurveda was I was trying to help myself grow, help myself heal. And uh, luckily, you know, I discovered superfoods and this nutrition protocol that, you know, Stephanie and I have both, you know, shared with a lot of people and shared with each other. And this protocol really changed everything. And it's really all about detoxing and nourishing. I mean, bottom line, that is the fundamental principle that if anybody doesn't get anything else from this, conversation mm -hmm. is please what you need to do what we all need to do with our bodies especially in this time where people are worried about the plague and all that is just detox and nourish right mm -hmm. it's got to detox our bodies and nourish that's what stephanie has been doing religiously since she got her cancer diagnosis is she's been i mean i just have to comment on your your experience stephanie because i watched you from the sidelines and the front lines and people were telling you you need to have both breasts removed you need to, you might have brain cancer. You need like chemo and radiation. And they were just coming at you with like so much fear and everyone cared about you and loved you it was all from the place of love. People, well, I can't speak for the doctors, but I can say your family was coming from a place of love and they really want, wanted the best for you. And I've never seen anyone be so fierce. I can't imagine being in that front line where I'm being torn in two directions, where it's like my intuition is like, eat healthy, do some, do not find, do the natural path. And then the other side is saying, Girl, you're gonna die if you do that, you know. And then you made a decision with this looming prognosis and this these 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 huge threats and fears and people begging you, people who loved you were close to you, begging you to take a different choice. And you and you you really stood in that, and you held your prayer and you stood, you know, you really stood in your heart with God, like I am being divinely guided and I'm gonna trust this. And it's so easy to start going with everyone else's things and wanting to please everyone else and you st stayed steady on the course so oh, thanks rach thanks for that mirroring rachel's been with me mar for every step of the way oh. she came to visit me up here on bainbridge island when i was here during my three weeks i call it my dark night of the soul summer because mm. i really you know i'd always been some been someone who is so positive and so like such a go-getter in life and and the cancer diagnosis, it, it took me down a couple notches, you know, and um, I didn't really know the way forward for a time there. It was a, a brief, brief moment in time where I was just like, hmm, am I really supposed to be here on the planet right now? You know, and obviously we all know what my decision was. But, um, but Rachel, you've really been there for me uh, every step of the way. She's my health coach, Mar. <laughs> yeah, she's she's my health coach. And um 
and uh, just one of my closest friends. And um, yeah, just love you, Rachel. Yeah, love you too. Thank you. And so, you know, like you, I took the nutritional path. I didn't have so much pressure to like, don't do it. If you go nutrition, you're going to die of Hashimoto. You're going to, you know, you're going to, Hashimoto's will kill you. It's like, I didn't have that kind of, you know, thinking. It was just like, well, I've tried everything else. Let me just try nutrition. And I thought I was doing really well. I was already eating organic. I was right. eating like tons of smoothies with spirulina and like all the different things in, but I just didn't have the right protocol. And so it's really important to have a protocol that can actually support you with your, you know, with, with your, with your veggies, your fruits, you know, you want to have your probiotics, you got to have your, you know, like having plant-based protein is really, is really key. All of these things together, having this very well-balanced protocol is just really what changed my life. And I felt it within the first few days. Um, my first few days, what I really was really uh, surprised by was that my sugar cravings went away. Mm -hmm. And that is so big because, I mean, I think that the majority of the world is addicted to sugar. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's really hard. I mean, there are some people who are like not into sugar, but their things might be potato chips, right? Or their things might right. be like carbs. Like, you know, I don't have any problem with carbs. Like, let's just get clear. Like, potatoes are healthy. They're good for you. They're wonderful. They're even helpful for weight loss. It's really, you know, the fats that are an issue because, you know, high fats um, cause the body to um, become insulin resistant. And so this is a problem for all of us. And so this is where sugar becomes a problem for all of us. But without going too deep into that, I just want to share that, you know, my experience was that I became totally free of my sugar cravings, you know, because when you have a clean liver, your body starts craving the right, your body becomes alkaline mm -hmm. and then your tongue becomes alkaline and then your tongue starts craving the right foods. It starts wanting more clean and green. So mm -hmm. if you're somebody like, you know, somebody like me who was also not very, you know, I would eat my veggies, but I wasn't somebody who was stoked on veggies. But if you want to start craving veggies, you know, follow, follow the protocol, do the greens, do the, you know, have the, have these superfoods like in your system so that your body starts to crave them. And I always say you want what's in your body. So if you're eating sugar all the time, you're going to want more sugar. Your body's going to crave that. If you are eating chips all the time or processed foods, your body's going to want more of that. Like not having it, having it all the time makes you want more of it. And so there's this component of being really, really, you know, able to like control cravings because your body, I always say, put the good and stuff in, don't try to take the bad stuff out. I'm not like, let's get severe and you're going to be on a diet. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Trust me, add this in. You're going to be feeling so much better. You're going to be, your cravings are going to just naturally fall away. Mm -hmm. And then you'll start eating more of the right foods because your body, you're filling yourself with more foods of the good foods. Absolutely. And I love that because, you know, for me, I have a, a very, how do you say, I don't want to say rebellious, but a very natural rebel in me where if I feel restricted in any way, shape or form, um, I, I will just do the opposite. I, I immediately, it's almost like if I'm like, okay, you, you're yeah. going to be eating this, this okay. amount of days, this, this portion. It's like, I can't. And I know a majority of you out there are the same, right? And so this is part of what I struggled with, which I'll talk about a little bit more. And so I love that you're really hitting an important point that, you know, the body is so intelligent. Our bodies, this is why I'm also very grateful for these kinds of discussions because what I have come to find out, not just through the research and the science, but also through personal experience, is how incredibly intelligent our bodies are and how much our bodies will respond lovingly to us and positively to us when we take care of our bodies. You know, that's all we really need to do. But what's yeah. happened, like you had mentioned, or both of you had mentioned, there's a lot of distraction. You yeah. know, many of us, you know, both of you found each other, found your community. Many of us are surrounded by tons and tons of distracted information coming from all sources, commercials, you know, whether it's the movies or television or radio or magazines, whatever. And we're being subconsciously fed a lot of garbage, you know, a lot of garbage mm -hmm. that is training us to, you know, have those cravings or even connect the emotion of feeling good with a particular kind of food that's not good for us, right? That we know is actually gonna set us back. And so people are going through these battles on a day-to-day -day basis and they're struggling because they wanna do, and this is what I wanna ask both of you now, and Rachel, of course, you can get definitely more into your Hashimoto's and everything, mm -hmm. but you know, the psychological part of it, because I know a lot of people that are out there 
that want this. They're like, I want this change. Mm -hmm. I want to do this. And then they try it. But the minute they try it, it's almost like they feel overpowered, whether it's people around them that are like, oh, don't do that. What you're going to go on a diet, you know, because they're, they're powerless, the people right. around them, or whether they're just not mm -hmm. aware that, you know, Hey, those things you're watching or things you're hearing or what you're, that's also influencing your ability to stay committed to something. So I'd love to ask each of you, whoever wants to start, um, what was the breaking point where both of you decided, look, I'm in, I'm committed. Like nothing or no one's going to stop me. No commercial, no person, nothing's going to stop me from realizing the power of nutrition and the decisions that I'm going to make to take care of my body. Like what, what was the breaking point? How did you reach that point and how did you keep that going? Yeah. Well, I'd be happy to answer first real quick. Sure. Uh, I hit my bottom. I mean, I was at the bottom. I mean, let me just share that I ended up living in my car. Hmm. Okay. Cause I could not, I had, I had gone through my savings. I was barely making ends meet. I was just like, Oh my God, I am just so tired of being sick. And then after a while I decided I was like going to build a business around sharing this protocol with people. And then so that I had this little gap where I like had to switch gears and, you know, start sharing this with people. So I really just hit my bottom with being so sick and, and not being able to work. And I was terrified of being homeless on the street. I'm not even kidding. Mm. And I was literally terrified of being homeless. I'm like, I do not want to be an old lady begging for money, which I actually thought that was my future. I really, really believe that was my future to be honest. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I want to address something that you said too, because you were talking about, um, about when people are like wanting to do this, but there's, big fears. I always say there's two reasons people are afraid to do this. One, they don't think they can. I got cravings. I love my coffee, my soda, whatever it is. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to change. And then two is just really strong habits. You know, mm -hmm. it's not just cravings, but it's habits. And I just wanted to share an inspiring story if I, if I may about um, one of the guys who, um, who, who, who has done the protocol, he got his mom to do it. And his mom was very, very, very um, deep into, you know, soda, like, like Coca-Cola was like a daily thing all day long. Like that was like her energy. That was her fuel. She loved it. It's her sugar, all of the good stuff. It was just really, really appealing to her. My dad was the same way. God rest his soul. My dad died mm -hmm. um, of diabetes and I wasn't able to save him with this knowledge because I didn't know it yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but what's so amazing is that she was this guy's mom, the opposite story. And I said, look, don't try to get your mom to stop drinking soda. Just have her put this nutrients in and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And guess what? She's no longer on soda. Awesome. Those cravings disappeared. They fell away. She was able to get off soda. And so that's an example, an extreme example of somebody who, you know, like that. And then I have another girlfriend, same person Stephanie was talking about, um, you know, the postpartum psychosis, that she was actually very, very hooked on coffee. And she was like, this is how I make it through the day. I have to wake up and drink coffee. I have to have coffee all day long. This is just like how I, otherwise I can't do life. Mm -hmm. Like it's impossible to live without coffee. And two things happened for her. One, within five days, she said coffee tastes like motor oil. She said it tastes like battery acid. That's what she said. She no longer liked it because her tongue became alkaline and she was craving alkaline things. So that dropped away. And she stopped needing coffee because she had plenty of energy from the superfoods from this protocol. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I yes. No. Say both those stories, but you know, it's really, it's really powerful. It is. It is extremely powerful. And that's one of the things I, um, I have a program in our Institute that's called, it's a pre post pre postnatal nutrition coach. One of the things I was very adamant about, because this has been, uh, what I have worked with a lot with my clients psychologically, what you're saying is don't focus on what you can't have. Don't focus on what you're stuck on. Don't focus on what you have to give up. Focus on the nutrients you're going to be putting in and exactly what you said, when you start doing that, when you start shifting the focus to what you can have and what you're putting in to support you, those other things start naturally falling away. It's, you know, but when you're so hyper focused, I can't have this, I can't, then you create this huge resistance. And then as a result, people just go back and forth. They'll go on something, it'll work, they'll go back. But the moment you shift gears, like you had just mentioned, it's like huge transformation. So thank yeah. you for sharing those stories. That's powerful. <laughs> and uh, Stephanie, how about yeah. you? What was like that, you know, breaking point? You're like, nothing, no one's going to stop me. And, 
you know, you're just like, I'm on this. Yeah. Well, there was, there were two moments that come to me. Um, one was I was out in Joshua Tree all by myself. I was going out there to write every, uh, you know, every couple months. And um, I had lost 21 pounds and I was feeling really good. And I thought to myself, self, I need, and there's superfoods, right, Mar? Like, I don't know that we've discussed that, but there's a superfoods protocol that, that, that Rachel and I enjoy daily. <laughs> and um, I'm actually on day two of the ULT, by the way, Rachel, right, right. now. <laughs> but I was there out in Joshua Tree and I was feeling so good and I was so happy with my results. I was like, I know I need these products in my body for the rest of my life. It was a clear transmission, you know, from spirit really. And, um, and, and I never looked back after that. Like I just knew that I needed to do, to do this, but the, the big comeuppance for me, like that was number one, but it's all about layers of evolution. Right. Mm -hmm. The second one obviously was the, the cancer diagnosis, because even though I had brought the superfoods into my diet, um, I was still having some cravings for other things that were not good for me. And I'd go back and forth and back and forth. Mm. I just, I wasn't all in to the degree that I am now, you know? And so I decided, I made the decision then that I wasn't going to keep doing cow dairy, I, you know, and I don't want to say anything bad about cow dairy. Some people love it and it's right for some bodies. It wasn't right for my body. I couldn't keep doing gluten and I couldn't keep doing, um, uh, fried foods and pork and stuff like that and, and and red meat like I just couldn't keep doing those things and I don't have a problem with others doing it but I just it wasn't right for my body and so I went more into I'm not a total you know capital V vegan but I do eat predominantly vegan foods and I also eat um, wild caught salmon and the occasional organic chicken and eggs and so um, but I'm way more vegan than I am any of those other things and so that's really been the journey for me has been to just like keep up leveling, keep refining, keep determining like, how does this make me feel? Is this working in my body? How does this make me feel? You know, and you know, Mar, I, I went and water fasted for three weeks, you know, and that was an incredible experience. And then coming back into food from that experience. Now I have no fear of actually not eating food. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> water like uh, the body is amazing like we have incredible reserves in our body and like you were saying like we do not need to fear the body the body is not out to get us the body has incredible ways of keeping us um of healthy we have to give it the right nutrition we have to give it the right not just food nutrition but the nutrition that we're taking in energetically relationships mm -hmm. our work you know full spectrum living right like exactly. that's like really important absolutely it's, it's never just about the food that we're putting into our body it's it's the whole spectrum exactly that that for me has been the biggest aspect of it because you know it really does start with how you are relating to your food and understanding what is food because i know the two of you the protocol you're discussing is based on the superfood supplements and detoxing and going through this which is a beautiful journey and i know for a lot of people it's a great jump start I've been through a few myself. I've done juice fasting. I've, I've done Vipassana meditation, you know, fasting and uh, low caloric diets and all of that. And at the end of the day, I also feel that when you start establishing a really loving and healthy relationship with your body and food, and you're no longer looking at weight or even the state, like what I re, I'll never forget. I'll share with both of you. Um, I had been right in the height of my health and fitness uh, profession, right? Um, I was like top trainer. I was bringing in a lot of money to the health club I was in. I was seeing a lot of clients, but so much pressure built on me. There was so much pressure that perhaps I'm not enough or I should do more that I started compensating and eventually found myself overeating. And then as I was overeating, I started feeling bad about myself. And as I was feeling bad about myself, I ate more. And then eventually I gained weight and I gained weight. I think it was like 15 or 20 pounds to the point where I was embarrassed to go to the gym. I started canceling sessions with clients. I was embarrassed to show up. And I had to really take some time to do an evaluation of what is going on? What am I going through? And so I started recognizing there was a few influences that were happening to me. One, the environment I was in, um, you know, it was high pressure environment. And I was allowing that to influence me when I didn't have to. Right. So I acknowledged that and I took accountability for that. And then secondly, I had to also acknowledge that, you know, whatever state my body is in. So when I was 20 pounds overweight, 
it wasn't until I accepted that and loved my body as it was in that moment in time and said, you know, thank you for being here. Thank you for, and like, just let it go that then I started <laughs> making the changes and like naturally relaxed about food and, you know, things shifted. I'll never forget the day I made the decision to come out of hiding and say, all right, I need to make a decision whether I'm going to continue down this rabbit hole of feeling bad for myself and going through this cycle or whether I'm going to accept as I am now feeling, you know, may not fitting perfectly to my clothes, but loving it as it is and still living life. And so when I made that decision, things started turning around. And so that's what I love about the message you both are sharing is that, you know, yes, you, we have so many of these outlets and resources to, to detox, like you're saying, to really recognize how much have we accumulated through the toxins, because what most people don't understand is what food is. Food is a way to, you know, nourish ourselves and food for many people has become entertainment, has become an emotional uh, way of dealing with things. Uh, and I mean, and it, the list goes on and on. And so as a result, people are not understanding the amount of food that is toxic, that has no nutrition, that then that builds in the body. And then over time, like you both were saying, you know, you hit your lows and you go through these moments where you, you know, are most of us forced to like, oh my gosh, do we want to live or what's going on? Um, and then having that really healthy relationship with food, for me, that's a huge one because when you understand blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, the things that at once, like Rachel was saying, maybe didn't taste so good, mm -hmm. begin to taste really good, right? It changes, and then it changes, it changes yes. hydrated, et cetera. Anyway, I can yeah. go on and on, but I jive with both of you tremendously and uh, I just love our conversation a lot. Yeah. So with Hashimoto's, Rachel, I'd love to know a little bit more from your perspective with Hashimoto's because I know there are a lot of people um, out there who are struggling with this right now. Mm -hmm. um, how long was a process for you? Um, how, and, you know, I know you had mentioned it had been a few years. You were going through this fatigue as well. Um, yeah, just talk to us a little bit more about, you know, that journey for yourself. And, and you had mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, coming upon... Um, your protocol and coming upon yeah. what you did and how that started yeah. changing things. But how was that journey and process for you? Well, it was interesting because I didn't, I mean, like a lot of people, I didn't know what the heck the solution was and I was trying everything. And so I had been vegetarian for 15 years and then I was like, okay, maybe I need to eat meat. And everyone was like, eat more meat, eat more meat. You know, you're not getting enough. And so I started eating a ton of meat and I was like, this isn't really helping, you know, <laughs> and then, um, and then I had, you know, I went to like, you know, I went to Ayurveda, I went to Chinese acupuncturist, I went to Chinese medical doctor, I went to herbalist. I was like going everywhere going like, just tell me, you know, just, I mean, I was having um vertigo where it was just extreme dizziness. Mm -hmm. I couldn't remember. I couldn't finish sentences. I mean, honestly, it was, it was like being really stoned. I'd go, and I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and someone remind me where I am in the conversation and I couldn't track other people too. And I really had a hard time with light. Everything was always too bright for me. And I also was always cold all the time. I was freezing. I'm like, Oh God. And I have poor digestion. Like I was constipated. Um, and I just, the list goes on. I was bloated. I was overweight, all the things. And, um, you know, it just was, I just got to a point one day where I made a decision. I said, I have been sick for nine years. Hmm. I'm going to get well. I just decided, I said, you know, people do get well. I just had to realize that people do get well. People recover from cancer. People recover from all kinds of diseases. Why would I not be able to recover from this? And that light at the end of the tunnel made me make a decision. I said, you know what? I'm going to be one of those people who gets well. I am going to be one of those people. I have no freaking clue how, but God is going to show me the way. Right? God show me the way <laughs> I was kind of like making a deal. Like, let's do this. Right. Right. You know? Right. And, um, so I just, you know, I just, it was like a prayer, but in the form of an affirmation, like just really mm -hmm. clear knowing, like I can do this. And I kind of thought it was going to be like a journey across the Sahara on a horse. And I was going to, you know, run into a, sh a shaman and, you know, or find a, find a healer. And, you know, in my, in my, in my trek through Tibet, I mean, I kind of was picturing like, or ayahuasca journey in Peru. I'm like something, I'm going to try it all. I'm going to go to heights and, find all this, you know, I'm going to find the thing. And actually it was just actually on Facebook that I saw someone make a post about how they felt all this energy and I've done this cleanse or whatever. And I was like, all right, I'll try what she's doing. And I actually didn't think that it was going to do much. I just thought 
it's healthy to cleanse. It's healthy to detox. It's healthy to, you know, to add more nutrients into your life. I'll just do this protocol, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, about seven days in, um, well, for one thing, seven days in, one of my clients in my, in my Ayurvedic practitioner, you know, days, uh, said, well, hey, skinny, kind of joking, like, like, hey, skinny. And I was like, did someone just call me skinny? Because <laughs> I'm like thinking I'm like way overweight. And this person just noticed and, and I and I checked in with him. I said, because he's an older gentleman. He was very, he meant it very friend, in a friendly way. And I said, what do you mean? He's like, well, you just looks like you've lost a lot of weight. And I said, well, actually, maybe I have. I haven't checked. And then I looked on the scale and I actually had lost 10 pounds. And I just was like, wow, that's a trip. You know, like I didn't. I didn't notice, you know, it was just like body dysmorphia. And I'm just kind of, I also was very like comfortable, you know, honestly, I'm comfortable with like a range of 15 up and down. I think everyone goes mm -hmm. to a range of up and down. You know, I can easily lose f five, four pounds in a day. And mm -hmm. I think it's great to be okay with where you're at, but I just wasn't feeling well. Yes. Know? So, um, yeah. so yeah, so then I just, you know, I was like, wow, I'm feeling really good. And, and what, what was surprising to me was that I took meat out of my diet to do this product for the for this cleanse, this 10 day part of the, the first 10 days. I took meat out of my diet and I didn't think I could do it. I was like, there's no way in hell that I'm gonna be able to survive without meat. Like there's just no way in hell. And um, I got to day two and I was like, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm like, I got through two days, I'll go another day. And I just kept going another day, going another day till pretty and I got through 10 days without it. And I was like, wow, I can't I believe it. how good I feel. And I remember I went, I went, on, a, I went on a run. I went, this is where, so this is where I started working out. I got so much energy. I was like, I need to start working out. Like I have so much energy. I don't know what to do with it all. I'm going to start working out. And I remember going to the gym and getting on the treadmill. And I was just like, this feels so good. And I saw the smile on my face and the reflection on the little TV screen. And I'm like, wow, I look happy. And I thought, what the heck? How is this possible? How do I? And I thought it'll be gone. The cleanse will be gone and I'll be like back to sick again. You know, but truthfully, honestly, I stayed on it for like, I stayed on this, like, you know, kind of like basic sort of daily maintenance protocol for, and it's been over six years now and none of my symptoms have come back. No more brain fog. My, my adrenal fatigue is totally gone. I mean, I, I'm so much energy. I can, I can, you know, I, I walk several miles on the beach every day now and I do yoga sometimes and I, you know, I sometimes go surfing with my boyfriend and, you know, and I can like, I just have a lot of normal natural energy. And my vertigo totally is gone. Like I used to get dizzy all the time. Um, I'm no longer cold all the time. I'm actually usually, if anything, warm all the time. <laughs> if anything, I'm like, let's just open up a door and open up some windows. And so I can tell that my body's in this kind of natural, healthy homeostasis that's just kind of consistent. You know, mm -hmm. I have energy. I wake up feeling rested. I sleep well now. I used to sleep horribly, but now my daily sleep, I wake up really, really well rested. Um, and I don't, I don't wake up throughout the night like I used to. So, and my, and my, and I, and I have a great digestion, no more constipation, my bloating's gone. I mean, everything is like, I'm a new person. You wouldn't even recognize my whole being if you had right. seen me seven years, six years ago. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So I, I definitely want to acknowledge too, the power of affirmation. I just did a, um, a presentation with an association that I founded years ago. It's actually an association for sleep consultants. And I did a presentation on um, parental caregiver emotional well being and its influence and their influence on child sleep, on their children's mm -hmm. sleep. And one of the tools or strategies that we talk about is the power of affirmation. And a lot of people think it's like some hokey pokey thing, some wishy washy thing, but there's actually science. So if you look up, there's really? scientific research out there cool. uh, for all of you that are doubters. But, but what I always say is experiment with it yourself before you're quick to judge something and say, oh, this is not gonna work. What is that? That's something hokey pokey. Try it out, mm -hmm. you know, um, and there is science behind it. And, and the, one of the most consistent things I have found with everybody that I've worked with and people who I've interviewed is the mindset. It's just like that one thought that says, hey, wait, other people are overcoming this. I can, yeah. you yeah. know, that seed, that, that turning point that goes from victim mentality to, hey, I'm taking charge mentality. Yeah. And I know nothing's going to get in my way. And then from that turning point, you make that decision to stay committed and dedicated to the choices that you're making that is going to turn your entire life around. So in your case, for example, you know, it's with the nutrition protocol that you're all following with, um, uh, what's the name of the company again? Purium. <laughs> Purium. Yes, Purium. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, I get, as I told you both, so I had many discussions with uh, Stephanie 
and Rachel, because I've been approached by many supplement companies over the years in my health and fitness. And I was explaining to them, if you see my cabinet, I've got this next and I have a hard time. And I'm very just, I personally, this is why I love this discussion. You know, uh, personally, I'm someone that I, um, I'm just very intuitive, you know, like if I feel like I, I, I tune in and I'm going to talk about a little bit so much to my body that I'll feel if I need a little bit more vitamin C on one day or a, or if I'm lacking something like I kind of tune in or iron or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. and some days I go without supplements, some days I have them. I mean, I just really tune in and my main food source or my main relationship is with food, right? Mm -hmm. Actual food, because this is the number one way to nourish your body. Um, and then the supplements are supplements. Um, mm -hmm. and so that's how I work. That's how mm -hmm. I function. Mm -hmm. And every human being has their path. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to recognize that, you know, once you begin to like Stephanie and Rachel have done, uh, have that turning point where, you know, you take charge and you make that decision and your thought process changes. And then what I uh, absolutely encourage everybody is to take the space because, you know, there's so much like I, I will tell you all. And I think it's a gift life gave me of being pulled in many different directions uh, throughout my life. It's like I'm being pulled here, there, here. And then after I became a mom, you know, that like grew tenfold. And this opportunity, that opportunity, wait, these responsibilities and constantly being pulled in so many directions. And the way that I was able to overcome that and still overcome that and work with it is by taking space. And when you take space, you get to know yourself better. You meditate. And meditation doesn't have to be just sitting there in silence. Meditation could be reflective walking. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of um, things that we don't need to get into today, but there's a lot of resources. But once you start developing a stronger relationship with yourself, Get it, not being afraid of yourself or your, or your body and empowering yourself, starting to love yourself and getting to know yourself better and taking the space to listen to your own inner voice, you will be guided exactly to what feels most empowering for you. And in some cases, it's going to be, hey, I'm getting on this Perium protocol. I'm going to be joining this group, this community. I jive with them. I love them. You know, and many people do. And that's why it's an incredible company and they're high quality and all the nutrients and supplements, which, you know, Stephanie and Rachel can share is high quality. Someone like me is completely opposite. I'm kind of like, all right, I just have all my different choices. I take <laughs> a day. I have other clients that do more intermittent fasting and do the OMAD. They do one meal a day. I have clients that do you know, one day fast a week. And, and, and I have clients from all walks of life that choose, um, you know, many different paths, but essentially what the foundation of all these paths are nourishment. It's exactly yeah. what Rachel and Stephanie are saying, which is, you know, when you begin to understand that the body needs nourishment, when you begin to give the bodies the things that it needs, you, your whole world will change as they were sharing. And all these things that you thought you couldn't give up and the cravings and all of that, you'll start to just notice, wow, a big turnaround. Yeah. So um, before I share, I'm going to share a little bit more about those that are interested in um, empowering people as coaches and kind of our philosophy and approach, which is what I just shared a little bit. I would love to hear more about um, Stephanie and Rachel um, Purium and, you know, the opportunities for people not only to detox, but I know that you also have offerings for people to even have a career in this path if they wanted to. Yeah, we sure do. Um, <clears throat> that's the health and the wealth path that uh, you shared about at the, at the top uh, from my Instagram profile. So we are, um, we're in the middle of a big, huge group reset right now, summer reset. That's what I'm doing for myself personally right now. And we're, Rachel and I are supporting hundreds of people right now. So people can get on board and join our summer reset um, by reaching out to us here. This is streaming on Facebook, right, Mara? So they can- you Facebook can and YouTube. And then I'm going to also put the recording on Instagram. Uh, StreamYard, I didn't have that Instagram option, but I will be putting the recording up on there. And then I'll kind of be reposting because I think we're on uh, this kind of time, Pacific time, five, and then eight, it's like eight Eastern. I think it's like dinner time and stuff. So in terms of viewership, I'm not sure we're going to capture a lot of people, but with our recording and I will be okay. also sending it out to our email list, we will definitely gain a lot okay. more. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So we have this protocol. Um, it's called the ultimate lifestyle transformation. It, it You can do um, intermittent fasting if if that is uh, something that you, that you love to do. We have different options for different people, depending on what people's goals are. And um, it's uh, this is doable. I think this is why I said yes five and a half years ago, Mara, because it's totally doable to cleanse 
if you would have approached me before I ever found this protocol, I would have said, no, <laughs> I am not going to do that. I do not want to feel depleted. I do not want to, you know, release all my food addictions, but I have over time. And, um, and it's all about nourishment. It's all about feeling good and, um, and making new choices that are more loving, right? You talked about self-love at the top too, Mar. This really is an extension of a self-love practice. That's been my experience personally. So mm -hmm. we both have discount codes that are going to help people um, take off a substantial amount of uh, money from the investment uh, uh, of the cleanse over a hundred dollars. And so in order to reach out to me, you can just go to my website, stephaniedon.com and send me a little email, a little contact form there. And um, we can just keep talking there. And with Rachel, Rachel, you want to, share more about how people can reach you you can find me on facebook there's my name rachel balance at rachel dolman balance at you can send me a message through facebook or you can send me a message through instagram um at rachel whole being health or just type in my name there um yeah and yeah like she said we've got amazing discounts we can give you 25 percent off of you know the product if you want to join our midsummer health reset it's pretty amazing so yeah we're happy to happy to support you we're going to be doing all kinds of things marta carlo we're going to be doing face yoga there's somebody who's offering workouts we've got you know people offering meditation so it's going to be fun yeah wonderful yes yeah. so if you're inspired you'd like to join a community and i do want to say that um you know for me i will i will share this with all of you as i very openly shared earlier um, you know, when you reach those moments in your life where you're just, uh, stuck, where you feel so stuck, uh, I shared that one experience I had where I, I, I had a, you know, self-talk, self-loving talk with myself when I was at the pinnacle of my, uh, health and fitness profession and how I kind of turned around. And there was another time actually, um, that was a few years later that happened. So I definitely want to share this because, you know, life is this beautiful adventure, and I think what happens a lot of times, and this is where people get so critical of themselves and beat themselves up, is that once you overcome something, right, or, or you, you, you're successful with the cleanse, you're, and all of a sudden you have a down day, right, uh, and you, 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 you begin to feel like, I messed up, I failed. And it's like, no, it's just life. It's just life. It's okay to have a down day. And what I will share with you is a few years later, after with this whole experience with the pinnacle of my health and fitness industry, um, I went through another uh, period where um, I found myself transitioning between leaving um, the location I was at and making some decisions about my career and life. And it was scary. It was scary. So how did I handle that emotion? Naturally with food, okay, which a lot of people are, like you were saying, Rachel, that's also uh, something that I teach about in my program, which I'll share with all of you. We're all creatures of habits and patterns. And so if you're not aware of them, most likely you're just living out all your habits and patterns subconsciously day to day, thinking that, oh my gosh, you have no power over them. And why is my life, you know, like this? And why am I struggling? But once you begin to be consciously aware of your subconscious patterns, of the things that you've inherited, okay, inherited from your family and not even just from upbringing, they could, uh, if you read Mark Wolin's book, and there's a lot of in, uh, information in neuroscience about this, but we can inherit patterns actually from our family lineage of, you know, forms of thinking and experiences, et cetera. And so because of that, you know, until you become consciously aware, you think you have no power control and most likely you're beating yourself up. What I did when I reached this next uh, period in my life where I was super scared of, you know, the changes that may be happening, not knowing what's going to happen. Um, and I began eating again to emotionally satisfy and feel better with myself is I reached a point where I felt so helpless that even my self-talk wasn't helping me. And I said, but I overcame this years ago. How can I not overcome this now? What's wrong with me? Hmm. And what life was teaching me at that point in time is that there's nothing wrong with you. I just want you to reach out to community because one of the things, and I'm sure all of you at some point in time may have heard this, your environment is super strong, uh, super strong influence over you. That's why it's important to surround yourself with people or, you know, in actual physical environments that uplift you, that, you know, influence you in a way that help you feel healthier, that also feed your mind and nourish your mind. Because if you're in an environment that's constantly bringing you down or beating you up or around people that have negative thinking and negative thoughts, you know, they're going to overpower you most times. Okay. So, um, and some, and some 
researchers say all the time. So, you know, what I ended up doing when I reached this other period, I said, I have to go away. Like kind of like what you did, Stephanie, you went and you handled your cancer. You went away to an environment that supported you. I went away and this is when I did my juice fast and I went away for seven days. Um, I had been struggling with, um, uh, menstrual, um, how do you say, uh, irregularities for quite a while. And I had been on the pill. I'd also seen an Ayurvedic practitioner who said, if there's one thing you take from this besides rainbow color, eating foods, <laughs> get off the pill. Number one off the pill. Um, and then I went on this juice cleanse and after having years and years and years of, um, ir irregularities with my menstrual cycle, my period came back after a seven day juice cleanse. I mean, it was like that, like my body just like, whoa. And I said, wow, wow. When I begin to pay attention to that my body. To me too. Yeah. And so, you know, I had to get myself out of my environment, my environment. I, so even my own self talk couldn't help me. So what I'm sharing with all of you out there is environment is important. So if you are struggling to the point where you, you can't, you don't feel like you can help yourself, Find an environment, whether it's a community that Stephanie and Rachel have together, whether it's, you know, there's so many that are out there, find one you resonate with and don't be afraid to ask for help, to be part of a community. Um, some of the groups that I belong to on Facebook, the, you know, fasting, oh, mad intermittent. I just like to see the, um, for me, seeing how people transform is incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and some, when you watch where people have been, what they're going through, which I'm sure uh, Stephanie and Rachel do on their platform too. It's like, wow, you know, the hope, the inspiration, you get this like fire under you. You're like, I can do that too. And so this really, we need community. We need each other. You know, we're not meant to do these things alone. Yes, we have power within us. And yes, change happens within us, but don't undervalue the power of community and the power of environment. So anyway, that's my point, because I know that there may be a few of you out there that are going I've tried it, you know, or I'm, I'm trying to do affirmations. I'm trying, but I'm still struggling. And perhaps you need a change of environment and a change of community. And so that can be something that will absolutely support you through this process. Mm -hmm. And we're happy to have conversations with you. You know, you can just like how you can reach out to Stephanie or myself and we'll just literally talk to you and just have, you can ask us questions and we can like talk about your particular journey, you know? Thank you. Thank you so much, both of you, for being so open, so candid. Yeah. I really sincerely appreciate and admire how much both of you have overcome and you continue to show up full force <laughs> and the energy yeah. that you have and the positivity that you have. I mm. mean, what these women are doing is so powerful and so beautiful. And, you know, anything that transforms lives, as you all know, if you go to my website, it's all about, you know, transforming lives, evolving humanity. That's why we have such a really great, beautiful uh, relationship, the three of us, because while we're on slightly different paths and how we, you know, share our, um, you know, education and, and how we support nutrition, we are on, we're, we're aligned, we're completely aligned. And, um, and it's beautiful that we're able to come together and share all these resources with all of you. Mm -hmm. So if any of you are interested in the educational path, if you're interested in becoming a coach to support uh, pre and postnatal moms and families, because when we support pre and postnatal moms, we don't just support the mom, we support the whole family dynamic. Sure. And you really want to learn the ins and outs about, um, you know, not only just the superfoods, but just foods and the things that are getting in the way and where people are struggling, um, the changes that, you know, women are going through pregnancy, postpartum, a lot of the discussions that we have, and you want to venture onto the path of coaching and really showing up in a way that is very integrative and holistic not a way that is trying to uh, impose what you think is best for your client or, you know, try to tell them, you know, you're an authority. No, but like what Stephanie and Rachel are saying, you're there to empower them, to cheer them on, to help them gain that clarity and see where they're holding themselves back. If that's something that you're interested in doing, I highly then encourage you to visit our website, parentinghealthinstitute.com. And we do have a program that is a pre postnatal coach program. All the themes and topics we cover are there as well. Um, and then we've got all these beautiful resources. So if people want those additional cleanses and supplements, um, then we have Stephanie and Rachel um, that are providing this amazing, beautiful community and resource as well. Thank you so much. Wow. What an honor to be here. I really appreciate you, Mara. Thank you so much.
Oh, it's my pleasure. And I will definitely um, be including your links. So if both of you want to email me, follow up with an email and share with me the links that you shared, your websites and any other additional information. I will put those in the description with the recording that I upload um, in addition to my information. So everybody will have all these resources available. Beautiful. Thank you. Absolutely. And if anyone out there has follow up questions, if there's anything that you want to know, if you want to see a part two to this, if there's anything you want to dive further into with this conversation, please uh, write in the comments. Let us know. We're happy if you're going through some struggle right now and something that the one of us had said or the three of us had said has inspired you and you want further discussion. Let us know. Comment. Um, share with us anything, and we definitely will be more than happy to speak with you and even have a part two. I would love that. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. Appreciate you so much and the stand that you are and the inspiration you are every single day, Mar. Bless you. Thank yeah. you. You too, both of you. Bless you both. And I look forward to more. Thank okay. you. Likewise. Take All care, right. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.